WWDC 2013 released a lot of new Apple products, including iOS 7, new MacBooks, and a lot more. But one thing that a lot of people overlooked was the new, brand new Xcode interface, Xcode 5, and it's a big change, and I'm going to be showing you that today. I'll go through three things. I'm going to show you Xcode 5 and all the new controls, all the new abilities. I might quickly go through Sprite Kit, which is a new application framework in Xcode 5. All the new testing and debugging tools that Apple's built into Xcode 5, taken from instruments and put into Xcode 5 Developer Preview. And I'm going to show you where you can get your hands on Xcode 5. And I'm also going to quickly show you iOS 7 in the simulator. I will do a proper iOS 7 video at another time. So let's get started. And I'm going to show you a tab bar application because that shows you two things. That shows you a standard view and a tab bar view. So I think that'll be more interesting than just doing a single view application. And I'll call it Xcode 5 Demo. Um, I don't expect you to follow along with this tutorial because you probably don't have Xcode 5 and I'm not actually going to be teaching you anything, I'm just showing you Xcode 5. So just watch along and enjoy the video. This is the new project summary window and it's actually quite different. They've actually brought the flat sort of look of iOS 7 into Xcode 5 and it's quite a nice look. The first thing that pops out is the smaller status bar area and status uh, display, LCD in the top of Xcode and it makes a big difference, it gives you a much bigger working space. They've pretty much halved the size because they've made the status area a lot smaller. They've also changed the look of everything, they've just got a big play and a big stop button. They don't have any big circles around it, nothing fancy, it's all very minimalist and it's quite a nice look. you got all the different iOS simulators and devices in just by click clicking on this and you can still access all your schemes. Uh, from the summary window you can access your frameworks, you can access everything that you used to be able to access. It's just all looking a bit nicer. Uh, there's a new team section in your identity area. And that means that if you've got, say, two developer accounts, and you or you might be an app developer and you develop apps for 20 different people and you don't want to have to keep switching between developer accounts, you can just in-team change to the easiest, ac most accessible one for you just by changing in a quick and easy menu. And that's really helpful and I find it really useful because I do have about eight developer accounts on the go at the moment. Uh, there's a cool new thing called the image asset area, and I'll show you that in a moment too. You've probably seen that. If you haven't seen any of this, Apple's released a few videos during WWDC on Xcode 5 where they're given a good demo, much more detailed than this. Uh, you'd have to be an Apple developer, so if you're already an Apple developer, I suggest you watch those. They're each like two hours in length. But if you got the time, do watch them. You learn a lot. I've learned a lot. That's how I'm demoing it for you now. Uh, if you're not an Apple developer, I totally recommend you become one. You'll get early access to Xcode 5, early access to iOS 7. I'm running iOS 7 on my iPhone. There's a few bugs, but it is good, and everyone thinks it's pretty cool. So uh, I do recommend becoming an Apple developer. And I've gone through how to do that in our first Xcode programming tutorial, Xcode Tutorial 1, Introduction to Xcode. And I'll put a link in the description. Let's continue into the capabilities tab, and that's brand new, and that's one of my favorite sections of Xcode 5. So things like background modes. You would normally have to put in a whole lot of code to turn on background mode so your app could run in the background, or add an extra code to enable in-app purchases, go into your developer area on the Apple developer website. would have all been really complex, but now if I want to, say, turn on background modes, I can read a bit about it, and I can just change the switch. And I've now can turn on audio in the background and location updates in the background. Maybe I want remote notifications and I want Bluetooth in the background. And so now automatically in the background this is all updating. So if I've got an audio app, if I wanted in the past on Xcode 4.6 to have audio play in the background, I would have had to add a few methods, about 20 lines of code. Now I just tick a box. So it's much easier. I can add into app audio maps. I can have maps running in the background iCloud's really easy to enable. Just select your developer account again. And this is probably one of my favorite sections. You've also got data protection. So iOS 7 now has built-in uh, keychain access and everything. And that's all really useful. Let's go into info. And this is all pretty similar. You've got your same uh, info.p list. Nothing really that new. Just all looks a bit nicer. Build settings is really different. You've got this sort of grid-like interface, and it's a bit more complex to follow. It's always I've always found build settings to be complex, so they made it even more complex. 
but there's not much change. You've got access to the same things. There's a few extra things, particularly source control and the new LLVM compiler um, in there. Link binary libraries and build phases and everything, that's all really similar. You got a few, you Apple said there's something like 1500 new frameworks in iOS 7, and there are a lot. Um, I won't go through all of them, but you've got uh, OpenAL, I think that's a fairly new one. Multiply connectivity, these are all uh, new frameworks, and they're all good to have. And they're all really easy to access, very similar to XO 4.6. And then there's build rules. Which I've never really looked at in XO 4.6, so I can't really tell you the difference. One of the newer things is source control, and that enables Git control and a whole lot of different things like that. So you can easily upload your project to a Git repository or another source control repository, FTP server, really easily. You can check the status of it in the sidebar in the summary. Um, and that's all really useful when you're creating a new project. If I show you that, you'll be asked whether you want any source control. Um, so it, it's all really easy to add source control. And you've even in the top toolbar, you've now got a source control menu, and you can check it out, you can commit it, you can change statuses. You know, all of that from within Xcode now, you don't need any external plugins, and you don't need to go into Xcode instruments or anything. You've also now got a debug menu, which is failing you, and they've added a lot to that. You can simulate location, uh, trigger false iCloud things, all of that sort of thing, and bots. So you can, um, oh, you got to have source control, but that pretty much means you can automate your debugging and workflow processes, which is, again, really useful. So now let me go to the thing that you've probably all been waiting for, which is all the new controls, and they are very exciting. I really like them. I mean, there's minor updates here, even instead of having a segmented control, you click on the button, it changes this little icon here where my mouse is very minor, but they do make a difference. So I've got a storyboard open here. Uh, you can create XIBs where you go file, new file, but when you create a project, I haven't worked out how you can create an XIB like that yet, so I never really use storyboards, I am now, and once iOS 7 comes out and I start doing XO5 tutorials, I will start doing storyboards, so I'm going to show you in our next programming tutorial how to use storyboards in Xcode 4.6 so you get used to them. Uh, you can see there's a brand new tab bar controller, and it's a really nice controller. It looks even better when you're running it in the simulator and that you highlight things. There's no longer any reflective shiny bars. It's just a completely white or whatever color you choose it to be bar with two nice icons. I really like it. Um, now, interestingly, if you're trying to upgrade an Xcode 4.6, which is the current Xcode project, to Xcode 5, all the code will work, well, my, almost all the code will work, and the XIB will work as it is. When you transfer a project from Xcode 4 to Xcode 5, you'll be prompted, or you will be asked whether you want to upgrade the storyboard or XIB to match iOS 7, so I get all the new buttons and all the new switches and all the new everything. If you select yes, there may be a few small compatibility things you might want to change. If you select no, then you'll just have the same buttons and controls as in Xcode 4, but when you add a new button, it will be an iOS 7 Xcode 5 button. So the integration um, and the transfer is a bit complex, but it's all manageable and it's not too difficult. I've transferred a few of my projects to Xcode 5, and I've selected to transfer the storyboards to and upgrade them to iOS 7, which means I can't downgrade them now, but Apple's estimated over 90% of people will get iOS 7 immediately, so it's worth setting up your projects now to work with iOS 7. I've got iOS 7 on my phone, and I can tell you now that out of the 50 or so apps I've got, over 30 do not work at all, and so the developers need to get onto that. And if you've got apps, you need to start working on them too. So let's go into a view and start adding some controls in and looking at what they look like. So we'll start with the button. The default button, now, there, there is no circular button. They all look like the custom buttons. We've now got a slightly different system font, as you can see, slightly lighter, much nicer. And the buttons... Uh, distinguishable because it's blue compared to a label which is still black. Labels are fairly similar. Uh, the text feels different and it's quite nice. I'll add one of those in and I can then show you the keyboard too. So let's add some text. Again a lighter font. It's a nicer text field. It doesn't have anything bulging out of you. The slider has the shadow when you drag it into Xcode. It's not there when you run the project. I don't know why it's there but it is. Switch is interesting. 
They've changed the switch a lot. Apple has changed the switch in iOS 6 too to be circular before it was square. I personally don't like the switch. It feels really weird to use. When you try and drag it, you've got to sort of drag it twice before it actually changes state. I'll show you that in a moment. Activity indicator is still almost identical, so I'll set that to be animating so I can show it to you. Progress bar looks exactly like the slider. Again, very thin, very small, very minimalist. Segmented control is interesting. This is now the default segmented control. So you used to have the option before to change the style from plane to bar, and the bar segmented control in Xcode 4 would look a lot like this. Uh, now this is the default plane one, so if I then run this app in Xcode 4 on iOS 6, this is going to look really ugly. So you've still got all the controls. If I go to bar, it looks identical in Xcode 5, but if I then converted this back to Xcode 4, it's going to look a lot different. So I'm going to set it to bar, which means if I run this on iOS 6, it won't look absolutely hideous. Our stepper looks fairly similar, looks a lot like the segmented control. There's not much else to show you. The web view, map views, they're all the same. Interestingly, with the map views now, by default, the map views support compass and changing orientation and everything. So before, to you know, the rotate with two fingers gesture wouldn't work uh, in iOS 6 by default. If you had a map view, you got to program that in. Now it does. Now all apps that have a map view, they automatically support flyover, which is all really good. I add the same. I'll show you a date picker that's really different. So let's put that down the bottom. I'll move the segmented control up a bit. They've got this great new sort of infinity look, I guess you could say. And it just goes on forever and it looks really nice. I personally like it. There's no new controls. They're all the same. They just all modified a bit. If I had a toolbar at the top, you can see that now you've got a translucent uh, status bar and that's now default. Uh, translucent and white by default to match. And there's not much else to show you, so I'm going to run this now on the iPhone 4 sim iPhone 5 simulator. You click run, uh, same process as it always has gone through. And this is where it gets interesting. I'll show you something now. Once it starts running, uh, here's the switch for example. When you click on it at first it goes to this long one and then you've got to slide it and it's all a bit weird. Uh, button's got a nice sort of fade in and fade out effect when you click on it. Uh, this is the new date picker. Segmenting controls, again the nice sort of fading action. Sliders, tab bar. Um, and then it's all transparent, obviously. So if I open up Notification Center or Control Center, it's going to be transparent. I haven't quite managed to open Control Center in the simulator. It's quite fiddly to do. And I'll quickly show you iOS 7 now that I'm in the simulator. There's only a few apps in iOS 7 that are here. For some reason, the simulator still has the old photos icon. I'm I'm not sure why. Oh, there we go. It seemed to change just then. See, so it changes when you click on it, but then it doesn't change. It's the new app, but the old icon. Don't know what happens there. You've got the new Maps app, which is actually quite good. There's still bugs in the maps, but it's a nice looking map. Uh, still the old settings icon, but then it changes when you click on it. You see, but I don't know what's happening. Still a few bugs in the simulator, so I'll show you the real iOS 7 on a device in a later uh, video. Now in the debug tab, which let me find that, where is it? Uh, here. In this tab you can now see the memory use and CPU use of your app. So what I've noticed for example is, bef uh, I find it useful, I found when I, on one of my old apps and I didn't realise this until I started using iOS 7, that when I had, when I opened a view it would use more memory and then rather than putting them going back down again, when I closed the view it would stay up and I never bothered with using instruments which is an Xcode tool. If you don't know what it is, don't worry about it. And so this is really useful. You can see the memory usage, the CPU usage, and everything about your app and the usage. So that's really useful. That's about all the skew. If I show you the .h and m, they all look the same. If you get an error, it's a slightly new red line. So it's it's flat again, but nothing incredibly new. And so that's pretty much Xcode Five. Let me show you how you can get it now. So. If you, let me put this, I uh, you go to developer.apple.com slash technology slash tools slash what's dash new dot html, and I'll put a link in the description, and that'll take you to this page. Uh, actually, well, you have to go to developer tools, and then click what's new in Xcode. 
And you're going to see pretty much everything that I've talked to you about. Auto layout, change to me, I didn't show you that. The debug gauges, that's what I showed you with the memory usage and everything. Uh, the bots, so it's the tests for you pretty much. And then you can click download Xcode. You're going to need to be a member though of the Apple Developer Program. $99 a year, as I said, very worthwhile. I totally recommend you do it. So that's it for this video. Uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on Xcode 5 and iOS 7. See what you think. And let me know if you've got any ideas of how you're going to implement iOS 7 to create something new and impressive. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.